go around, go around. These are the words that the preliminary report is showing that the first officer called on two occasions that continued on and the aircraft ended up going off the end of the runway and thankfully was saved by the EMAS. Today's video is a great teaching lesson and a time to learn about when and why you should always go around. My name's Gary, I've been an airline pilot for 18 years. Let's get right into it. Hey, go around. Okay, reviewing the initial data coming out, of the, this is the preliminary report coming from the NTSB. This was in Roanoke, Virginia. This was September 24th at uh, 2117 local. And uh, the registration number was November 21129er. That's an ERJ145XR. It was operating as a commute air doing business as United Express flight 4339. Let's go ahead and get into it and watch and listen to some of this air traffic control with the visuals. And this is uh, courtesy of Voss Aviation. Okay, you see there, that is the ATIS up at top. So that's K-R-O-A. The 25 is the date. The four digits behind are in Zulu. So 0105 Zulu. So if you were to minus that out, that is 910 local in Roanoke. So it's automated weather. The wind right there is 240 at seven. If 10 miles, broken at 500, broken at 8,500, overcast at 11,000. Temperature 22, dew point 21. So basically when the temperature and dew point are that close together, you can expect clouds and reduced visibility very low to the ground. Altimeter is 3004. Let's continue. Tempe, 5834. Uh, area of heavy to extreme precipitation begins about three and a half mile, three and a half mile final all the way down to the runway. At ground, pickle nine. Pickle nine, ground. Yes, sir. Uh, FICON modems uh, are in the uh, issuing process right now. Both runways are 100% uh, wet. Five, five, five. Okay, so that's a ground vehicle telling the tower that, hey, the, the airport, it's all five, five, and five. So the runway is split into three sections. So he's saying five, five, and five, it's 100% wet. But basically five means that's, it's fair. The braking action is fine. There's no issue with the braking. There's different ratings. You can get all the way down from five. You can go all the way down to zero. If you ever get zero, you shouldn't be landing on the runway. You would have no braking action. It's basically when it comes down to like just a hard sheet of ice. Big line, Roger. Lima 5834, uh, not issued on the ATIS yet, but all runways, condition codes 555, 100% wet. Can I get a wet check, meter 4339? Meter 4339, wind on the field currently 250 at Niner. Okay, so they call for a wind check. And the wind check is 250 at Niner. We'll pull up the 10-9 here. If you look at Roanoke here on the runway... It's their landing runway 34. So 250 at nine, it's basically a direct crosswind off the left coming here. But nine knots is still is completely doable. It's not anything that I'd be concerned with uh, just yet. Roger, thank you, Commander 4339. You're welcome. Commander 4339, contact now, 118.3. 118.3, Commander 4339. 4339, runway 34. Commander 4339, runoff tower, wind 250 at Niner, runway 34, clear to land. Area of uh, heavy to extreme precipitation begins about four mile final all the way down to the runway. Clear to land, runway 34, Roger, Commander 4339. Okay, so the tower tells them that there is an area of uh, extreme precip all the way down to the runway. Now, I do find it a little bit weird that they didn't even acknowledge it back. Now, technically, you're not really required to, but I would at least be a little bit you know, concerned. Now, here's the thing. To be fair, he, they may have turned to each other and said, okay, what are we going to do about this? And this is something I'm going to point out right here. Uh, the ERJ-145 does not have leading edge slats. Slats are the front part of the wings that come out that help you. And to give you an, an example, and I'm almost positive this with the ERJ, but for the CRJ that does not have leading edge flaps, when you come into land, you are a category D aircraft because you're moving so fast because you don't have those leading edge slaps. When you go to the 700, you get leading edge slaps. You are actually, you're moved into category C because you're able to fly at a slower approach speed. But what I'm getting at here is these type of aircrafts without leading edge slats take a lot more runway than even some aircraft like the 757. I know it sounds counterintuitive because the 757 is a huge plane, but it has the ability to slow down, has better braking. So the fact that you're already coming into this situation, it's raining, it's wet, and you only have 5,800 feet of runway here. As you can see, the other runway, runway 24, had 6,800 feet. So it has an extra thousand. I'd probably be asking for 24. You know, maybe they already did and said no, but I'm just telling you, this is already setting up to be iffy. Uh, Sky 40, uh, 792, how's that weather looking up? 
and uh, as far as 47.92, it is for the most part over the field. See, now you hear all these other aircraft are starting to weigh in and ask questions. They're interested and curious about what is going on. But so far, we haven't heard anything from the express jet. CMOS 5834, turn right on Bravo, taxi, Alpha, Foxtrot to the ramp, this frequency. Bravo, Alpha, Foxtrot to the ramp, with you, CMOS 5834. CMOS 5834, how are flight conditions on final? Uh, smooth, but pretty marginal visibility, uh, short final. So you're here in Piedmont. Piedmont lands, they give taxi instructions, they say marginal visibility. So what does that mean? It means that conditions could get iffy. Scott 4792, you're going to be uh, experiencing potentially extreme precipitation on final for runway 24, contact tower 118.3. Yeah, we'd like to uh, just continue the approach then uh, maybe go off and hold somewhere and tell let this weather pass. So again, this goes to show you discretion that pilots have. They advised him that there's going to be extreme precip on his final. Now, it could have been his prerogative to go ahead and continue, but what does he decide to do? I want to deal with that. Let's go around. I'm going to hold and let this cell pass through before I go in and try that approach again. They may have a little longer runway, but still 6,800 feet is not a lot. If it's extreme weather, why take a chance if that's if you're not feeling comfortable with it? Real quick, we're going to hear for the sponsor of this video, and then we'll be right back. All right, guys, I want to take a moment to introduce today's sponsor, Upside. The holidays are meant for giving, but that doesn't mean you can't get a little something back, too. Between road trips and hosting dinners, groceries and gas add up quickly. When I use Upside, I earn extra cash back on things I'm already doing. It actually makes those rushed airport mornings a little easier, you know. When I realize I need gas and I'm already late, at least I'm getting something back. There are over 100,000 gas stations, grocery stores, and restaurants on the Upside app, ensuring that cash back is always just around the corner. There's no coupons or confusing conversions, just rewards you can cash out when you want. All you do is claim an offer in the Upside app, pay as usual with your credit or debit card, follow the steps in the app, and get paid. People can earn up to three times more cash back with Upside than with other products. Upside has given back $1 billion to its users. To find out how much you can earn, download the free Upside app and use the promo code GARYBPILOT to get an extra 25 cents back for every gallon on your first tank of gas. It's an extra 25 cents back for every gallon on your first tank of gas using the promo code GARYBPILOT. And now back to the video. So when you're about 30 to 45 minutes away from an airport, you start gathering information. You get the weather, you ask the flight attendants if they need anything, you talk to your company, and you start to gather that information. Now, the ATIS at the time, this is how fast things can change. It says it was calm winds, no precip, and a ceiling of 15,000 feet. 15,000 feet is going to give you enough room and calm winds. That sounds to me, I read that, I go, what a great night. I don't need to be worrying about anything. So the captain, pilot flying, he briefed the localizer approach to runway six. The first officer, the pilot monitoring, suggested reviewing the landing performance details for a wet runway or a runway condition code, RCC of five. But the captain declined due to the ATIS not reporting precip. I want to make something clear. We are here to learn lessons. I'm not trying to point any fingers, but some of this stuff, this is in the report. This is not speculation. And it starts to paint a picture here for what's to come. Now, the fact that this FO says, yeah, let's run some numbers for a wet runway. And he goes, no, nah, it's not in the ATIS. Tells me he's being kind of dismissive. Now that on its own, he's the captain. It's his prerogative. But watch what happens. It gets so much worse. So it says, during the stent, the flight crew checked in with the approach controls and formed of the precip along the runway to path to runway six. And the other aircraft were using runway three, four for landing. So the captain requests the FO to set up the ILS for runway three, four. So the FO sets up runway three, four approach, briefs the approach changes and monitors the weather radar. After turning on final approach, the flight crew observed the runway and heard previous landing aircraft report marginal visibility and bumpy conditions. During the approach, the rain intensity increased. The captain requested the FO to run performance calculations for landing on a wet runway with an RCC of five. Oh, hey, if only somebody had just tried to do that. So the FO ran the performance calculations and determined that they would have a margin of approximately 200 feet more than that was required without the use of reverse thrust. Okay, so if you're not if you're not aware, now we have a landing app and you put in all the conditions, you put it in and it will calculate and tell you how much you need. 200 feet is a very thin margin. Usually when I'm landing somewhere, it will say, you know, you have 8,000 feet of runway and you're doing your calculations, even with huge failures, right? With you know engine failure, hydraulics, it still says, okay, it requires 5,700 feet, but you have 8,000, you have a lot of time. 200 feet is wild. So the captain briefed the go-around procedures and said they would divert to GSO, Greensboro, North Carolina, if they had to execute a go-around. 
On short final, the rain intensity increased and the captain requested windshield wipers on high. As the airplane descended below 500 feet, the FO observed that they were high on the precision approach path indicator. That's the PAPI. This is what a PAPI looks like right here. And then observed the captain correcting the flight path, but recalled they were still high as the airplane crossed the threshold. After crossing the runway markings, the FO called go around, but the captain continued. I am seeing something very odd here. There's a female first officer that seems to be on top of her game, trying to advise the captain. And this captain, for whatever reason, I'm not going to speculate why, seems to be completely dismissive of her. It's one thing to dismiss, hey, do you want me to run the numbers here? Do you want me to do this for you? But the fact that she calls go around and didn't go, that's a huge red flag. Any airline I've ever been at, we have a policy that if somebody calls go around, there's no exceptions. You go around, there's no fault. You, you're going around. When I was a sim instructor, there was two things that a pilot could do where I would stop the simulator. One of them was if a pilot called a go around and the other person continued. I'd turn off the motion, I'd stop the sim, and I'd walk up to the front, you know, I'm a chair in the back, and I'd sit up and I'd say, hey, my name's uh, John with the NTSB. I just wanted to know, um, your other pilot called a go-around and you overran the runway or you crashed or did this. I basically simulated some experience that, dude, the other person called go-around and you didn't go. I'm trying to like explain this without understating how insane that if one pilot calls for a go-around and they refuse, how rare that is. I was a big proponent that if somebody calls a go-around, it's no fault, it's free, you know, well, it's not, it's not free to the airline. You know, it's going to cost you a little extra gas. But for you, your career, your safety record, your livelihood is on the line. If you're not sure, go around. That's what we train for. It's no big deal. So it says about halfway down the runway, the FO called for a go around for a second time. But the captain continued. I want to make something clear. This is the second reason why I would stop the simulator experience is Pilots are required to touch down in the touchdown markings or the first third of the runway. This last line dot, that is the end of the touchdown zone. If you do not touch down by that marking, it is an automatic go around. In matter of fact, on your check ride, if you touch down after that point, that can be considered an unsatisfactory or, or a training event, basically meaning you didn't pass it. They want to see your judgment that you would go around at that point. Now, here's the thing. As I mentioned, the ERJ does not have leading edge slaps. Now you're dealing with a short runway, heavy precip. Other pilots are talking about it and just canceling their approach. And now you go halfway down the runway and you still do not go around. If you're halfway down the runway, that means you're out of the touchdown zone. You are now illegal. You need to go around. Like unless you were on fire or you had some other reason where you don't think you could get back up in the air, there is no reason for a good working airplane to not go around in this situation. From my perspective right now, this FO has been dismissed the entire time, has been given no recognition, and then twice calls a go around and is ignored by the captain. And now they're in the EMAS. Let's listen to the rest of the audio. Roger, climb eight there, left turn hitting uh, 210, stars 4792. We have 4339, tower. So right here, they're not answering because I guess something was disabled on COM2. We just had uh, aircraft run up into the EMS. Ground, pick up nine. Oh. Six nine, run up ground. Sam, understand there's an aircraft in the EMS, is that correct? Affirmative, alert three. Copy all, the aerodrome is closed. Uh, Notum uh, cancel it, or Notum will be issued this shortly. Affirmative. Guys, if you're pilots out there, this is unacceptable. This is what I taught in the simulator. Go around. If I'm flying the plane and it's clear in a million, I've seen the runway the whole way down, the winds are calm, I'm about to butter this landing, and I hear the other pilot say, go around. I'm going around. Us pilots, we trust each other enough that we should, that if another person is sitting there in the qualified seat that they call a go around and you don't respect that enough, I'm sorry. Maybe this isn't the job for you. And I hate to say that, but I, again, I'll give the benefit of the doubt now listen to her talk. Shira says, oh, she's professional still. She's, oh, yep, yeah, well, yep, so that's, are you off into the EMAS? Commander 4339, are you guys uh, off the end into the EMAS? Commander Roger, trucks are rolling now. Dude, if that was me, I'm not going to lie. When I was an FO and young, you know, in my 20s, I, you know, I don't know how old she is or anything about her, but I feel like I may have just been, yeah, I called a go around twice, but you know what? The captain didn't want to do it. Like, I almost would have been snarky with it, but she was professional. It says a lot about her personality, in my opinion, to her professionalism. So basically, the NTSB is going to come in and they're going to put this captain 
in the hot seat. I did the movie review the other day of Soli where the NTSB was played to be the villain. This time, the NTSB might be the villain, but in a good way. Because if I'm working on the NTSB or I'm a chief pilot or I'm an instructor, what is your excuse? Your pilot called a go around twice. Did you not hear her? Okay, so let's clear something up. This plane overran the runway and went into EMAS. Without this EMAS, this could have turned from minor damage and no injuries into a complete fatality. And I'm gonna show you why right now. So let's explain EMAS first. An engineered materials arresting system at the end of the runway. If an aircraft were to overrun the runway, the tires would sink into the crushable lightweight material, causing the aircraft to slow down and safely come to a stop. So basically, EMAS, in a sense, is like a runaway truck ramp for airplanes, except it doesn't obviously go up a hill, but it's built into just completely uh, collapse and absorb the energy to slow down a plane that overruns the airport. Looking at Roanoke Airport right here, we'll zoom in here on the back side of 3 4. So this is 1 6 going out, and you can count the chevrons 1, 2, 3. It crossed into 1, 2. It looks like it came just shy off the third chevron from where the EMAS starts. It's not an exaggeration to say that everyone could have been killed had it not been for EMAS. This airplane would have been, went completely off the ledge here onto the street. There's an embankment right there. So I think the odds that this plane comes flying off this ledge here into this embankment, there's a high likelihood that there could have been multiple fatalities, if not everybody killed. Obviously, here's the takeaways. Call go around, you got to go around. I think the FO is going to be in the clear unless the FO happens to be, you know, on her phone or breaking sterile cockpit or something. Thanks to EMAS, it saved some lives. That's the video for today, guys. Let me know your thoughts as always. Please like and subscribe. I'm so close to 100,000 K. And until next time, stay safe. Don't wait until your sideways baby sliding upside down. You can always. You can.